Yes, welcome to the lighter side of the dark side. It's your Thursday night freak show. I am Dark Mark, the goth comedian. And as always, my co-host, Nicole Six. Hello. Welcome to another show of substance without judgment and a good sense of humor from Mark. Okay. That, I guess that's <laughs> another slogan. we got so many of them out there. It's going to be a good show. we got two VIPs here, Nicole. We do. We do. Right next to you, to your left. Huffington Post, of all places, said... Of the 10 Buddhists you're going to follow on on Twitter, this is one of the 10. Yeah, I think I'm number 10. <laughs> <laughs> He's the author of Hardcore Zen, Sit Down and Shut Up, uh, 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 There's No God and He's Always With You, and among yeah. other books. Uh, and I'm glad to have him back on the show. He was on one, he was one of my first guests, and I really pursued you. Yeah, I didn't know I was there one of your first. I was, uh, you were in the first couple months. It's uh, Brad Warner. Hello. Brad <laughs> Good is, evening. Brad is here, and uh, right next to Brad... Somebody that I pursued ever since I started the show, and for some reason, you know, she, you know, she was having sex and having babies. <laughs> she wasn't able to, to come on. But busy, busy, busy. Another very important person. She was named. I don't know what year this was, but you were named one of the most fascinating people in L.A. by L.A. Weekly. What year was that? Oh, uh, it was a couple years. ago. Couple years ago. Couple years ago. Yeah. She is the uh, <laughs> the uh, uh, a wonderful, beautiful dancer, and also the the woman, the genius behind Devil's Playground, and the genius who said. I'm going to take Star Wars and Burlesque and combine them. <laughs> and now she has Star Girls. It's, uh, I, I haven't seen it in a while. It's so great to see you. And you look, you look fabulous, better than Thank ever. Thank you. Courtney Cruz. Hi. And don't tell your husband I said that. <laughs> anyway, before we, uh, before we get started, I have to tell you about our sponsors really quick. Uh, everybody loves doing some cooking. Now, Brad, have you ever been to, you all right? I'm okay. just clearing my throat. Oh, good. You ever been to Doobie's Home Cooking, Brad? I have not. I uh, have. Courtney, I'm sure you have, right? I have not. You, no. Neither of you have ever been to Doomies Home Cooking. The oh, wait a minute. Doomies. Yes, I have Doomies been Home Doomies. Cooking. I was going to say, Brad, it's are, you, uh, are you a vegan? Yeah, uh, vegetarian. Yeah, yeah, yeah I have been there. I have yeah. been there. Right, right. It's, it's some of the tastiest vegan food you would never, you could never it tell is it's vegetarian. And actually, they are having, and this is actually interesting, uh, and if you're in L.A., and uh, we have people listening all over the world, but if you're in L.A., go to Doomies Home Cooking, or if you're visiting, 1253 Vine Street, Hollywood, California, uh, nine zero zero three eight. Uh, they have they have uh, th this is, these are all vegan. They have Philly cheesesteak. They have fried chicken. The nachos. Speaking of L.A. Weekly, was voted one of the be time best nachos in L.A. In L.A. Wow, it's all vegan. Mm -hmm. And I'm having, a new vegan, so that's that's exciting to hear. Right, I, 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 I eat it's meat. a great place to transition. So much of the food yeah. just tastes, you know, amazing because it's all like, made with yeah. uh, vegetable proteins, the same way you'd have animal proteins. Right. In a lot of ways, it's better for you too. Anyway, less right. processed. Right. The creme brulee. Mm. Uh, oh yeah, you got some desserts for your one of your coworkers at the Rainbow. How did I that did. go over? It went well. Yes, <laughs> uh, they're having a special thing uh, this Saturday, May second. If you're listening live, uh, the uh, next to Doomies, they have a uh, coffee shop, the Blue Rose, and they're having a launch party for a Cruelty Cutter. Cruelty mm. Cutter is an app everybody's talking about. It was created by the Beagle Freedom Project to help consumers figure out which items were not tested on animals. Mm. For products other than food, you simply scan the barcode of the product. Instantly tells you if it's tested on animals or not. And uh, they're having a they're having a launch party, and uh, for uh, in honor of the launch party, for one day only, a special cruelty cutter burger will be available at Doomie's Home Cooking, mm. and vegan desserts and coffee uh, will be available at the Blue Rose, twelve fifty three Bryant Vine Street. That's from seven to ten. Uh, go down there. I'm sure it's going to be a great party. I might check that out myself. That sounds awesome, yeah. My and, roommate would probably be really into it. She doesn't use anything that's animal tested. Right. So, uh, but, if you're, you're, but if you're ever in L.A., you're, you're looking for something, something good to eat. They've got, I mean, it's ridiculous. With the, they have fried chicken. They have vegan fried chicken. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, also, the uh, we're also sponsored by Audible.com. Oh, and boy. Brad Warner. I am one of their, yeah, You authors. have two authors. You have two books on there. Sit Down oh. and Shut Up. Punk Rock Documentaries on Buddha, God, Truth, Sex, Death, and Dogen's Treasury of the Right Dharma Eye. Yeah. And then Hardcore Zen, Punk Rock, Monster Movies, and the Truth About Reality, which is a book that I keep loaning to people and never get back. I <laughs> still, it's a lot, yeah. Josie That's still has my book. This, uh, this is the second one. I, I'm, this is the second one. So I might have to get an audio book. So here's how you do it. Uh, you go to darkmarkshow.com, www.darkmarkshow.com. You can see our old episodes, including the last time Brad was on on YouTube. You can see our, uh, uh, subscribe to us on iTunes. Uh, uh, you know, stare at pictures of Nicole. There's one there, <laughs> and then uh, it, you um, and also you uh, uh, just uh, go to um, uh, just click on the Audible button right next to my smiling face. You get a free book, and you can pick one of Brad's pick books. One of mine, yeah. And I'll have uh, 
There is no God should be going up soon. We just mastered that one. Oh, the, really? The so, book, so you yeah. read these yourself? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. That's awesome. Uh, and so, uh, so and, and I read that book, and that was a great book, too. So definitely go to audible.com if, you, if you're going to dig uh, Brad, and we're going to get to some interesting conversation. Uh, to check out his books. Hardcore Zen is a very good, uh, is a very good uh, introduction, and I do like Sit Down and Shut Up, and I, I like all his books. They're all good. And, a fan. Thank you. And if you're listening live... Uh, go to, uh, if you're listening live and you're in Los Angeles tomorrow, I will be performing at the Ha Ha Cafe Comedy Club. All my, uh, my, uh, Valley friends are like, when are you going to be doing the Ha Ha? And I'm doing it tomorrow night. And I'll be on Lancashire Boulevard. I don't have the exact address and I don't want to, uh, bog down the show. But if you're in the Valley, you know where the Ha Ha is and just go check that out. And, uh, I'll be performing at 730. Anyway, so Brad is here, and I'm going to start with Brad because okay. we're going to start right where we left off last time. Oh, I don't even remember. But. I know. It's it <laughs> almost two years ago. What You are not a big fan of the Dalai Lama. And what's, what's the problem with the well, Dalai Lama? No, no, I'm not a... I, just launch it right in. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not anti-Dalai Lama. I'm just... Uh, is it the concept or is it the guy? No, or? no, no. I, I, think, I think people misconstrued some comments I made as being anti-Dalai Dalai Lama. I'm just sort of... Uh, you know, when when people talk Buddhism, they they seem to only think the the, the they think the Dalai Lama is as everything, and and he gets on the cover of all the magazines and everything else. So right. you know, he's I, the I, I, up a Buddha, yeah, a he's the pen up, yeah. <laughs> so you know, I, I just try to kind of comment that you know there is more beyond the Dalai Lama. Dalai Lama himself is he seems to be a nice guy, right? You know, he doesn't he doesn't uh, seem to weird yeah no, I, I mean I, I from what i from what i understand you know it's a weird life though yeah. I mean, it's got to be weird but i mean do you believe in the whole you know that they put like all these things in front of oh, that the thing, kid and, yeah yeah no not really i mean they have that whole they have that whole ceremony where they try to find the new incarnation of the dalai lama and they put like right. the comb and the shaving brush and whatever else the old dalai lama right owned and then see if the kid responds to it I, that sounds like a bunch of stuff to me but you know <laughs> right well if you don't know and i should introduce i should i should tell people who you are because it could say sure. we didn't listen three years ago but uh cordy nicole this he uh you we, were in a punk rock band and we're going to hear some of your music uh later uh, zero defects you grew up yep. in ohio yep and you moved to japan I mean, you yeah. went to Africa and all that. Yeah, but. yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot of stuff. Yeah, I, li I lived a part of my childhood in Nairobi, Kenya, and then um, in 1993, I guess I moved to Japan, uh, and and that's where I ended up getting ordained. But I actually started studying Buddhism before I went over there. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, but I had a Japanese teacher named Gudo Nishijima who thought I should ordain as a as a priest, which I really, I thought that was a stupid idea, but I kind of trusted his judgment and right. went for it anyway. Uh, did he put like little things in front of you? He did, not, he did not. Yeah, I'm not the incarnation of anybody. Right. Uh, probably. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Right. I know if I could figure out who I was incarnated from. Um, well, you're kind of the bad boy of Buddhism. I guess so. Yeah, people people have that impression. You know, I wrote this book called <laughs> Hardcore Zen. <laughs> I love that. Well, yeah, I wrote this book called Hardcore Zen, which is about punk rock and Buddhism and monster movies. Because at the time I wrote the book, I was working for a company in Japan that made Japanese monster movies. Uh, Ultraman. So there's a lot Ultraman, and and we were founded by the guy who invented Godzilla, right. uh, Agent Tsuburaya. So, uh, so I put that all into a book. Uh, this book, Hardcore Zen, and at the time that I wrote it, I I thought this book was unpublishable. Uh, I, I I just thought I'd written the the most unpublishable piece of of whatever that uh, I thought maybe you can I swear would, on the show, by the way. Yeah, I've, yeah. But I, I, I okay, I will uh, <laughs> later. Uh, <laughs> later, gotta warm up to it. Yeah, uh, you can't start that shit right away. Um, hey. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah so so yeah I, I wrote this book about punk rock and monster movies and and Buddhism and I thought there was no way anybody'd publish it I I had tried my hand at being a novelist and I couldn't get any of my novels published right. so so I knew the process by which one submitted a book to uh, publishers and and I did it with this with this unpublishable Buddhist book which I thought <laughs> you know this this is a laugh I'm just going to send this off and right. get rejection notices and that this was the first book I ever got published was this this crazy mishmash of uh, Buddhism and punk rock and right. Godzilla. Uh, let me uh, speaking of that. Let me just just side, just a sidebar. Why don't you think America could make a good Godzilla movie? 
Because the last <sighs> one was, I mean, everybody was telling it's, me, oh, the yeah. last one was great, and then I saw it and sucked. And yeah, Matthew Broderick that. Yeah. That, that's not good either. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go so far as to say that last one sucked, but it wasn't, it, it, it could have been better. Uh, and and I don't know. I think I think. Well, originally I thought it was because uh, the 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 Roland Emmerich or whoever did the the first one, the Matthew Broderick right, one. Right. Those guys didn't understand the concept of Godzilla. They thought he was a big animal, you know. And then right. and then they shoot him with missiles and he dies. And Godzilla can't. He, he's unstoppable. Right. That's the idea. He just keeps coming no matter what you throw at him. I, well, I uh, think we take it too seriously but yeah. not seriously enough like we don't take Godzilla himself seriously like you know they're terrified of Godzilla but in a comedic way yeah. and we can't seem to master that because we would just shoot it with our guns duh <laughs> well you know th there's that and it just it just yeah I think I think people have this idea of trying to make it realistic it's 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 it's, it's Essentially, it's, suits. it's unrealistic to begin with. So <laughs> right. don't, don't try to don't try to make it realistic. Right, <laughs> just, right. just have fun reliever. with it. You know? Right. Anyway, speaking of having fun, speaking of pop culture, uh, Courtney Cruz is the, the mastermind behind uh, and uh, Star Girls. <laughs> and uh, so where uh, I, I I know I I mean you know we've been friends for a while, but I don't know that much about you. Where did you grow up? I grew up here actually uh, in Orange County. Oh, well, that explains a lot. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I, I'm pretty sure the first time I met you, uh, you were doing uh, burlesque at the Bordello Bar. which That's oh. where I started uh, Devil's Playground. Yeah, I was at the Bordello Bar. I have fond memories of Bordello Bar. You know, tell tell Nicole and Brad about the Bordello Bar. Oh, you guys didn't ever go to Bordello? It's no. now called the One-Eyed Gypsy, I think. I haven't been there since they changed. I haven't either, no. But um, yeah, the Bordello Bar... Uh, I guess it opened what like eight years ago Something in this like little tiny venue um in downtown la there was no signs outside or anything it looked like an old broken like like, like a broken down taco shop outside yeah, yeah, in downtown yeah. yeah and it actually i think it, like was a mexican restaurant before but the, the, it became and, and, the bordello and the legend was it was a bordello in the 20s yeah and that's ah. that's the history of the the actual um piece of property was mm -hmm. that it was a bordello in the 20s and that's why I heard as a rumor that the owners of the property wouldn't allow um, the club owner to put Bordello outside oh. Oh. on the building. Yes, which is why there was no sign ever. You always oh, had to okay. kind of, it was like a treasure hunt trying to find. But, but once, once you got in, it, the treasure was there. I, I yeah, <laughs> no, absolutely. It was decorated. It, it was decorated like you would Beautifully believe. ornate. Oh, I mean, I love uh, the curtain was one of those... Um, like the old vaudeville curtains where it kind of gathered and pulled oh, up. Oh, those are neat. Yeah, it was mm. beautiful. And it was this tiny little stage with this ornate wall that had like all this wood carved like uh, uh, women and stuff on it. With, like, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Busty. And they tore yeah, all this down when they refurbished? No, no. I think they just kind of changed things a little bit now. Mm. But, that um, seemed like a waste. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was beautiful. It was actually built by a set decorator oh. um, who was really good friends with uh, the people who opened it, which I believe they were the owners of uh, the Brown Derby. Right. The people who used oh, to own the, the Derby. Brown Derby. Yeah, so they opened the Bordello, and actually that's where... Um, Devil's Playground, my show, uh, made its debut. And, and you were doing Barbie burlesque? Oh, yeah, wow. man. We did so many themes. It was crazy. <laughs> like, I mean, everything from Batman characters to Barbie to sideshow characters. Right. I mean, anything well, for, you can think well, for, of. The first time I had, first time I had uh, one of your former dancers, Sin Fisted on. Yeah. We were mm -hmm. talking about what, what you do because there, there's a lot of burlesque Troops out, out in LA, and especially you, you, now. Oh my God, there's so right. many burlesque yeah. shows. And in most LA. of them, most of them are very traditional. They really try to be yeah. like the 40s or 50s. Mm -hmm. You have a whole different take on it. Yeah, you know, I I started out that way. I mean, I came from before I was a burlesque dancer. I was a fetish model, and so I came from a background of very like pretty posy, you know, kind of look and 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 that pinup kind of thing going on, like the very Betty Page kind right, of stuff. Right, so I was going to say, you, 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 got, you always had the tattoos and yeah, so yeah, the, and the attitude. And, and when I was 18, I had the Betty hair and the whole thing, yeah. Right. And I, I came from that world, um, and uh, I decided to become a burlesque dancer so that, because uh, I wanted to be on stage again. I, I had grown up doing theater and dance when I was a kid, and I hadn't done it in so many years, so this was kind of like, way to parlay my modeling into what I actually like doing, which is live entertainment. Right. And um, 
not that I didn't like modeling. It was fun, but for me, it's it's. You like to move. Yeah, I, I like, and you know, I I like to take on roles and characters, mm -hmm. and so um, you like expression. Yeah, yeah, and and I loved doing traditional burlesque. Don't get me wrong, but I after like the first couple of years, I just got really bored of it for myself personally, and so I felt like, well, if I'm bored on stage, then my yeah, audience yeah, is not going to yeah. be interested in watching what I'm doing. So. For me, there's nothing worse than seeing a dancer who's not into what she's doing. You I've know? seen that. Yeah, <laughs> and that goes for strip clubs, that goes for pro dancers, that I've goes for that. ballerina, that, everything. That, yeah, that, it's. That, I mean, it's that. any type. If you're not into what you're doing, then you right. shouldn't be doing it. And you're it. very comfortable with your body. Yeah, absolutely. I Any chance to get naked, I'm right there. Like, and I, I, I'm very comfortable watching that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's ever since I was a kid. I swear, when I became a, a, a nude model and a burlesque dancer, my parents were not surprised at all. Like, really? Yeah, not at all. Like, they, you know, I, I was very fortunate to grow up in a very open-minded household. Hippies? Um, yeah. And no, no, my parents were not hippies, actually. I. It's funny, like, I... I grew Buddhist? up until I was about 10 <laughs> years old in a very um, conservative household. Yeah. My parents were raised as Jehovah's Witnesses. And oh, wow. so, yeah. And so then we were- uh, That explains a lot. We were kicked out of the Jehovah's Witnesses <laughs> oh, when I was dear. 10, thank God. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. How do you get, how do you get kicked out of Jehovah's Witnesses? <laughs> um, associating with hetero, uh, homopho uh, homosexual people. Oh, so dear. they found out, the church found out that my mother's best friend was uh, a homosexual woman. And so they told her, you know, you have to choose basically because as far really? as Jehovah's Witnesses are concerned, like you're, you, that's, you can't do that. Like that's you, interesting. You will go to hell. You yeah. have no place with God if you, you are can't even be friends. You can't even be associated with them because it means you accept their lifestyle. That's interesting. I had no yeah. idea. And so, um, you know, my parents were kicked out and they were fine with that. Like they had just both been raised, I guess, you know, all the way through their childhood. And so it was just kind of the norm to them. To, yeah, a lot of people. Yeah. And, yeah. and it was, it was great because we ended up, um, being introduced to a lot of different uh, religion mm -hmm. types. You know, my parents kind of little, tested out different stuff after lot, that. A lot of different homosexuals? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, my mother came out a couple years later. She was, oh, wow, good. Yeah, my mom was a lesbian, so. Oh, um, yeah. that, 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 that really wouldn't have worked with it. No, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, 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 they would not have been happy with that at all. Dad, you know, like any man would who was married to a woman for almost 30 years. I mean, it was a little rough on him, but... Yeah. Was it a, a surprise? Uh, not to me, it wasn't. Right. Uh, my mom always um, kind of had, you know, a little bit of a... You could tell. Like, she wasn't mm -hmm. a super... Right. Yeah, she wasn't like a super lipstick, pretty, super softy mom. You right. Know? She was a little She's more... She's not, not like you are now. Yeah, well, and I wasn't either. I grew up, I was a tomboy. You know, oh, okay. I did gymnastics growing up. And stuff, I was going so. to say, do you have the same uh, the same rap that every beautiful woman has? You know, I was in high school. No guys liked me. I was all skinny and they weren't interested in me. I should send you pictures, Mark. I had like acne, the unibrow. I, and plus, honey, I grew up in Costa Mesa. So like everyone was tan and blonde and I was dark haired yeah. and freckled and fair skinned. So I grew oh, up. Well, in that case, please send me pictures. <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah, uh, yeah, so people, you know, I didn't have a lot of, I was kind of the local weirdo in right. Costa Mesa, you know. Right. And the weird thing, so since since we talked to Brad, the bad boy of Buddhism, uh. Uh, you, there was a movie about your life. Oh, yeah, there was. There was a documentary called well, Brad Warner's Hardcore Zen. Hardcore Zen, yeah. and uh, we're going to, I'm going to show a picture. Oh, you got uh, pictures? Of, uh, well, the picture of the covers is interesting because it's, oh, the, you and a bunny outfit. Yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> so the, the audience on. sees that, it's, it's on the screen over there, but. You're, so how did that work out? How did that? I mean, oh, the, well, there's a uh, okay. The first story. off, that's not very hardcore. Let's be honest. <laughs> well, I got the, I got a leather jacket on over it. Oh, so, excuse you know. me. <laughs> so, no, the 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 uh, your bugs Ramon. I was like yin and yang, you know. A little the white. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was talking to the director Piruz Kalea, and right, uh, we, we're just kind of brainstorming what to do next, and I said. I thought it would be funny if I went out in a gorilla outfit and just started talking about Buddhist philosophy and never mentioned that I happen to be in a gorilla costume just to see what <laughs> that would be like. And I just said this as a joke. I was joking with him the whole time because right. we became really good friends after a while. And um, the, I don't know, like a week later, we're getting ready for a shoot. And he says, well, I couldn't get a gorilla costume, but I got you this. And he pulls out this bunny <laughs> rabbit outfit. Yeah, I, I didn't think he, he would. I just said this off the cuff. I didn't right. think he would take it seriously. So that's what we did. Uh, I put on the, the Easter bunny costume with a leather jacket on. And we found this kind of hill 
uh, which I guess you can't film on anymore, but there's this right. hill where you could see it's in it's in like Echo Park and you can see downtown LA if right. you stand right on the right oh, spot. Oh, it's probably, probably the one they filmed that Michael Douglas movie where he's right it, about it might to be. go. Yeah. A bunch of famous films have been done right. there. And we just and, and I just stood there and I, I just talked about Buddhist practice and different things like that and never acknowledged that I was oh, in so, a, so these in were a little vignettes yeah. within the movie. And we yeah, and we stuck them in here and there in the film. So so all these things seem to happen to you. Now you 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 you, 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 you were practicing Buddhism and you're, you're yeah. Your, uh, your teacher's like, well, I want you to ordain as a monk. You yeah. didn't figure that. You didn't figure that the book would be, uh, you know, would get any traction, and it did. Yeah, that's it's all been weird. And then somebody, <laughs> somebody comes to you, and, I, and we have Peruse on the show. He's a great guy. Uh, he comes to you, I want to make a movie about your life. What do you What are you thinking then? Well, it, that when I first put out the Hardcore Zen, which right. came out in 2000, end of 2000. Three, so really 2004, actually, you know, that's right. when people started seeing it. Uh, almost immediately, within like six months, a guy contacted me wanting to do wanting to do a movie, like a narrative film based on the book. And I got all excited. I was right. living in Japan at the time. I flew to L.A., met the guy, talked to him, and he hyped me up. Right. And then after, you know, months and months and months, nothing is happening. A year later, nothing mm -hmm. is happening. And, I, and I'm not hearing from him anymore, and it's just gone cold. And this this same scenario played out about three other times. Wow. So I think Piruz was number four who came to me talking about a movie. And I just told him, uh, I, I, I kind of halfway blew him off. I just said, yeah, well, because he was talking about a documentary and I gave him a list of places I was going to be talking. And I said, mm -hmm. if you want to send some people out to, to shoot one of my talks, go ahead. Here's right. Here's the list. And I thought this is the last I'll hear from this guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know. Three weeks later, I was in New York City, and he he said, "We got the film crew; we're ready to go." And I said, uh, "Okay," right. <laughs> you know. And he started filming it, so uh, I was really impressed because he he just started doing this movie instead right. of these other people I'd been involved with were were talking it to death and never did anything. Right, he right. he hardly talked at all. He just got the film crew out there right. and started shooting. And speaking of documentaries, I uh, I was reading on your uh, blog uh, HardcoreZen.info, which I recommend everybody check out. Well, thank you. Periodically, which you were talking about the Scientology. Yeah, documentary. Yeah, that was and, crazy. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, I, I, and I was going to ask you about it. Uh, it was my uh, what was interesting to me. Mm -hmm. I had a different take than everybody else. Everybody else was like, "Oh, these guys are crazy. They're wacko." And yeah. I, I sort of uh, that uh, that but part that's of it. Kind of how well, everybody I feel about knows. <laughs> yeah, well, that, well, that's, well, that was my point. Yeah, yeah. That was my point. But what was interesting about the documentary is the first third kind of. And it, it, I, I, there were two things that were interesting is that they had actually told more of the story of L. Ron Hopper, which I didn't know. Yeah. And also told what what people get out of it and what the, yeah, what, yeah. what drew them in. So I had no idea. I just hear people like, oh, they're nuts. They're, you know. Yeah, yeah. And are they more nuts than any other? I don't think so. I, I think every, you know, if you poke into any religion's backstory, uh, it, it sounds fairly crazy. I mean, there's there's this, I don't know, the, the, the whole Xenu, the galactic emperor and all that stuff that's right. that's pretty well you worked on that movie in japan so I'm sure <laughs> yeah <you> yeah <laughs> so so that's pretty out there but really there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that's but people people don't go into scientology because they hear about xenu the space warrior and the dc 10s that are dropping people's souls into volcanoes and all that stuff and they right. go oh that's for me they get in because they want some kind of fellowship and and uh they want people I think a lot of people are interested in these sort of deeper questions about the meaning of life. And if they can hang out with people who are also interested in that, uh, that's that's very attractive to them. And and some people and, don't and, even and, care and, about that. They and just that's want why people community. hang out with you and come to your... I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And we read try the books to, and, 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 we try and to do something. Your, yeah. Well, and like <laughs> Buddhism, all religion is mostly about all core beliefs. It's not even just religion. You could just believe in science. You could believe in nothing else. It's about having... A sense of balance, something that helps you better yourself, something that helps you grow as a person, and people find that in different ways. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I and, mean, and, and by the way, yeah. that that was the moment of intelligence on the Dark <laughs> Mark. <laughs> <laughs> so we try to have one every show. That's good. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but I mean, people are uh, people do find that, and, and that's what I you know that's what I found when I started meditating and started yeah. going to, to to Buddhism uh, to and 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 going to, and reading up on it and and following it. Uh, I, but you 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 made a great point in your column, and then you compared what Buddhism does to you to what it likely does to John Travolta and other Scientologists. Uh, boy, I don't remember what I said. But okay, well, <laughs> let, what you said was uh, you, I write you, you, th things, you think but... that John Travolta gets something out of Scientology, it, it, pretty similar to what you get out of Buddhism, but the, it, people at Scientology, uh, you know, basically 
it's a means to an end and they become rich assholes and you're trying to find well yeah there there is that um i can't remember what what i wrote but you know i think i think people are searching for for something and and people will have all sorts of ways if i if i didn't think the path that i was on was substantially better than others i wouldn't be in it so i don't want to you know i don't want to play that but i also think there's different different ways for different people so um so what's best for me may not be best for everyone although in some of your writings you've well, related yeah. that uh, well, it is, <laughs> some <course>. people <laughs> some people that are doing a non-zen buddhism or some people that you may have you've you're oh, a controversial well, figure you, yeah. you, they don't call you the, well i'm the only one that's called <laughs> you this so far they don't call you the bad boy of buddha for nothing and i got called that in like a finnish newspaper or something no 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 it was irish it was in northern ireland it was brad warner the bad boy of buddhism and, and i bet the they admired newspaper. it though it's ireland <laughs> yeah it was but, but, you, but you've, you've been critical and you use dirty words to uh yeah sometimes. yeah well well i've been i've been critical of some of the people who've, who've abused i think you can abuse Buddhism and meditation and you know it becomes a it, it's become a kind of a commercial thing you know people have realized you can make money off of it I, right. I haven't realized how to make money off of what I do but you your, know, your blog knows. makes more money than your book my blog makes more money than yeah you read that yeah that that's that's so when I did my taxes this year I realized that my blog had brought in about four times as much as any of my books which I was really shocked wow by. which me which is to say that my books don't bring in very much right well but you should go buy them and help me out <laughs> you really should or go to Audible. <laughs> <laughs> help me out and help Brad yeah. out. But well, talk about somebody who's, who's who's hit on something that's very successful is Courtney. Where did you get the idea to combine Star Wars and burlesque? Yeah, I want to know that. Well, you know, um, it wasn't the first kind of combo along that genre. You know, we had done um, the Batman uh, combo with burlesque right. when the Dark Knight movie came do you, out. Do you have the the the, the one with you as the, with the Joker? The yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. you got to see this. This yeah. is. This is hot. Hey, you can show that to the, the cameras right here. Look at that. That's the uh, cover of your uh, husband's. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, was that, what is that? A record? Yeah, it's a vinyl. Yeah. Vinyl. I, I gotta explain. Vinyl. I, I've explained it to the kids on other shows, but yeah. that's that's a record. But look at that. <laughs> that's a hot Joker. <laughs> Bang! <laughs> I'll be your Harley Quinn. <laughs> so yeah, that was um, that was actually my first kind of delve into taking burlesque from the traditional sense of what everybody. Uh, recognizes burlesque to be in modern day and right. it was kind of the first like mashup I did uh, right. was the Batman stuff and then after that I actually did video game characters right um, I did well, Samus Aran from Metroid and built the full suit you know wow. of armor and the arm cannon and everything I, I don't play video games but no I no that's I actually a hot idea because, yeah. because, because at the end a of the game underneath a giant yeah. suit it's so a giant like armor off. like these big shoulder globes <laughs> and a helmet and like full armor head to toe and it, actually you don't know that she's a girl until the end of the game mm -hmm. so so underneath this big clunky you know mecha suit yeah. is a really hot chick and, and G4 TV had actually taken a poll for me um, when I decided to do video game characters as right. burlesque dancers and I said, you know, can you just ask like G4 viewers, like what are the top, you know, 50 video game characters because, of all I mean, time Laura that they would Croft want to see stripped down? Her. Metroid, yeah, it was number one. So I was like, wow, that's <laughs> the one I'm going to do then. Laura Croft is so passive. She was actually like number 10, I think. Yeah. She's pretty hot. Yeah. yeah. And she but was in the show too. Melina. Melina's always really up there. And, oh. and so, yeah, we did video game characters and then... I, I mean, I grew up on comic books, video games. And so that's right. why I really decided to kind of mesh the two is I just, I love doing character stuff. Right. And then the Star Wars thing, it, honestly, like it was because there's so many great characters yeah. and costuming possibilities are like phenomenal for a burlesque dancer to right. have so many pieces to remove. And, and taking something that no one had ever added to the burlesque right. world, I thought was... You know, hey, what, do you think, what do you think Star Wars has, has endured? Because I, I got to be honest with you, mm -hmm. and I, this may uh, people may be shutting off the show right now, but <laughs> I'm not a huge Star Wars fan. I like Ooh. it; it's it's okay. Blasphemy. It's okay, <laughs> but I, I, I'm not. Saying, I don't think it's that great. You know, I actually met somebody. Um, was that today? Yeah, I was actually. Uh, I had to buy a new car as my car was breaking down, so I was talking to the the guy who was selling me the car, and he was like, "No." 
I'm really honest, I would He's like, I'm not seen... really a big Star Wars fan. I was like, I'm a huge what year Star were Wars you born? <laughs> <laughs> and he said 1984. I, I was like, oh, okay, no worries. Well, yeah, yeah. well, but that's, that's... but yeah, like I I grew up on that stuff, you know. I well, I, I did too, but I I I don't know. I just I, it, it didn't hit me like it, it hit didn't strike else. a chord with you. Yeah, like and it that's kind of how it is. Like I mean, I've yeah. read all the books. If it, you like mm. it, you like it, and if yeah. not, it's but, just but a good movie. The Coles are young too, and you you love it. Oh yeah, I mean I I'm 85, so. Yeah, of course oh. I read the books. Wow. Han Solo's a badass. You played video <laughs> games? You've done the... Yeah, I'm not as much into the video games, but I would watch my cousins play the video games. So whenever so, I like a game, but I don't personally Brad, want to play Brad, are you a big Star Wars fan? I li- I'm i more of a Star Trek fan. You know? oh. Trekkie, my dad's a Trekkie. I like Star Trek, I grew up too. with Trekkie, too, yeah. I'm not big on Star Trek either. But, I don't get it. I don't know. We actually hey, did. There was a great show that we did. Original or Next Generation? Star Wars versus Star Trek. Original Okay. <laughs> You did uh-huh. a Star Trek burlesque? We did a, we actually were doing wrestling shows, all female wrestling right. shows right. for a while. Yeah, it was Star Wars versus Star Trek. <laughs> all right. So it was oh, called Star Wrestling Wars. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> it was, that was so, a really so fun. So what character were you Captain Kirk's going to lose his I gun and punch someone? I actually was Spock in that one, and oh, I wrestled boy. Darth Vader. It was killer, man. It was really funny. Oh, the way yeah. it was set up was like celebrity death match. So I would film yeah. the girls oh. on green screen, and we would put them in these little funny, and they were like the trash talk Sounds videos. That's great. And that was their intros, and then each character would come out solo and do their striptease down okay. to their bikini. Come on, did, did, did you have Spock talking trash? Yeah, I gotta hear this. Spock talking trash. I gotta hear this. Yeah, how did, how did they do that? Um, what did I say? I can't even remember now. It's on my YouTube. I don't know. It was This was like five years ago. <laughs> it's not logical that you would beat me. I mean, I don't get it. No, it was like, um, uh, fuck, how did it go? You want me to remember all my lines from this from like five no, years no, ago? No, no, just, I mean, you can just sort of wing it, but I just like, I was just trying to get a sense of the Spock trash talking voice. It was totally like the regular Spock voice. Spock, I'm gonna kill you. I get the Dark Vader. (laughs) No, you stay in character, you know. Spock Uh, speaks very like kind of monotone and there's no emotion involved at all and this eye contact, but no emotion and the face doesn't change really. Oh, well, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, but yeah, it was it was quite a funny show. I wrestled Darth Vader. Darth Vader's shtick was fucking hilarious. It was one of the best trash talk videos we ever filmed. (laughs) You'd hear us laughing and in the and background, and like and totally and low budget. Yeah. You know, and like, you'd rip off the Darth Vader, all the clothes and stuff. And um, well, yeah, no. What would happen is, is the the videos were like God. the intros. You know, just right. like a wrestling, just like WWE, where right. they have these videos that play, and then the guy makes his entrance. You know, right. and so each girl would like make her entrance, and she would do her burlesque striptease on the stage, oh, okay. down to a bikini, and then her opponent. We would play her opponent's video, and then oh, her opponent okay. would come on and do her. So striptease. they don't rip each other's clothes off. No, no, okay. no. And all then right. they would end up in the wrestling ring for a third song. And it was mm-hmm. full contact wrestling. Right? Yeah. That, who, wow. And it wasn't like cat fighting, like pulling each other's hair or wrestling, like yeah. body slams. Anybody, anybody oh. get hurt? Choke holds. Um, you know, actually, <laughs> I'm fortunate I didn't get hurt. I actually wrestled right. Sin. I wrestled her as Venom. I was Joker. And she would be so she strong. She was Venom, yeah. <laughs> and we had this great choreographed routine that we did where she actually picked right. me up by my throat and choke slammed oh, me. Yeah. She's strong. Ring. Yeah, and little did we know that I was pregnant at the time. Oh. <laughs> so, so fortunately, my strong ass baby survived two wrestling matches. Actually, wow. really? You, yeah. You before I knew I was pregnant, I had wrestled twice. Yeah. Wow. So, Yikes. Yeah, he's crazy fine. coincidence. He's, he's a gigantic monster baby. Who... <laughs> That's what the next episode of Jane That's the Virgin is actually right. about. Is it is really? pregnant wrestling with chicks? <laughs> pregnant <laughs> wrestling with chicks. <laughs> I don't yeah. watch that show, not but in, I saw a commercial yeah. for that. That's the first so, Jane the Virgin uh, uh, reference that's been on the show. Show. But that was the first wrestling. thing I thought of. I don't oh even my know God. Because I was like, pregnant chicks don't wrestle, shows me. Yeah. That's yeah. funny. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, people asked me when I was pregnant if I was going to still perform as a burlesque dancer, and I said I was not about to inflict that gigantic belly that I had on anybody. Someone oh, but, offered but, to paint it as the Death Star. But, 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 <laughs> oh, man. but you did because you're, you... Well, you're I did, yeah. Cover. No, I... I my, uh, if we can my show husband, that other picture... Uh, yeah, my husband asked me to shoot for his album cover that he uh, had titled Spawn of the Psycho. That makes sense. Right. And, um, no, no, who's the psycho? Him or you? He is. Actually, the baby is. I don't... Um, no, my husband... I know the baby's a spawn, but which yeah, one no, is a psycho? My husband. Uh, oh, okay. I think we're both a little psycho, honestly. Right. Yeah, you know, he had asked me... I if, think it's much better than Kim Kardashian's. Thank you. Right. <laughs> Demi Moore's got nothing on that. Uh, yeah. You should show the audience, though. They have no idea oh, what I'm talking it's, about. It's, 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 oh, it's okay, on good. the screen, yeah. All right, yeah. Okay, yeah. It's on the no, it's, um, It was cool, because, you know, I did some pregnancy photos, like some pretty stuff, and... Right. And then my husband was like, you know, because they're the, the the whole thing with Psycho Chargers, they're like a horror rock band, you know, right. and um, they do a lot of movie soundtrack, like 
horror movie soundtrack stuff and right. uh, real grindy. Anyway, he said, you know, I want to do an album cover that um, that will get us in trouble. And I was like, <laughs> oh, okay, I'm I'm yeah. always game for that. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. what was your idea? Yeah. And he said, well, I just I want to I want to just be an image of you completely naked, you know, eight months pregnant, covered in just blood and that's it. That's, and he that's said, trouble. I'm not even going to put a title on the front of the album or anything. I just right. want the image to speak loudly. And it spoke loudly. It got banned. <laughs> so, yeah. So yeah um, you it can, got banned from the three record stores that are left in the United uh, States. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, obviously there's a censored version on iTunes right. and all that kind oh, of oh, stuff. Oh, really? Oh, it got banned from iTunes. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, they censored uh, it right away. They were like, you can't put that artwork up here. Uh, so. uh, speaking of music, and uh, when we call uh, Brad Warner the, the punk Buddhist... Mm. We're not kidding around because you are a bass player in a punk band. That's right, uh, Zero Defects. Zero Defects, and yeah. we're actually going to listen to a little Zero Defects right now. Okay. All right, this is, this is Brad Warner, Zen Master, going punk. Non-violent. How do you handle that? Do you oh, just sort you of stand do, there and just, let the violence you happen around you? <laughs> <laughs> You're on the outside. Make sure everybody, uh, everybody's good. So, how do you yeah. how do you reconcile the wild craziness of punk rock with the quiet hmm. serenity of Zen? Yeah, it's it's I, I the 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 strain of punk rock that I was involved in most was this kind of. Uh, Washington D.C. minor threat influence stuff, which which had a very strong sort of moral component to mm -hmm. it. Of of uh, you know, there was this uh, nonviolence, and there was this idea of of, uh, of political action and awareness and social, you know, all this stuff. So I I felt like a lot of the um, the punk rock movement was doing a lot of the same things as as uh, what the Buddhists were doing. Mm -hmm. So to me, there always seemed to be a strong connection. I, but for a long time, I thought I was the only one who ever felt that. That's why I felt this book, you know, the Hardcore Zen would be right. unpublishable. Right. Uh, and uh, and I found out actually a lot of people had noticed that connection. Well, I think one of the people knows, and by the way, uh, Courtney just took off her uh, shirt, so I don't know. I noticed that. Here. I, noticed, I, 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 I noticed that too. I think she's ready to wrestle somebody. But... <laughs> Uh, one of the people that apparently noticed because he did a forward to your book and did uh, was uh, featured in Hardcore Zen was Randy Blight from. Oh, Land that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. How did yeah. you, how, how did he? Uh, I mean, first off, Quiet and Serene does not describe Lamb of God's music. No, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, how did uh, he? He he's, he's a Buddhist and he meditates. Yeah, he 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 is, and he contact. I don't know if he considers himself a Buddhist, but he definitely meditates. And he he just contacted me out of the blue one day. I had heard of Lamb of God, but I right. I wasn't wasn't really a follow of their of their stuff. And right. he he wrote me an email or something and said he'd really liked Hardcore Zen and could we meet sometime. And and it took a while for us to get together, but we actually ended up becoming friends. And he's uh, I did I did a blurb for his. He's coming out with a book sometime later this year about that whole. I don't know if you heard about this incident where he was in the Czech Republic and they were accusing him of uh, manslaughter because somebody right. had jumped on stage and then fallen off and then died. Yeah, um, That's a pit you don't want to go in, Nicole. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the pits for the Lamb of God must be pretty, I, I've pretty seen, rough. I, I've seen them, yeah. I've been in a couple of their shows. I, 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 don't, I don't go in them. Yeah, I, I wouldn't either. <laughs> yeah. he, he's invited me to some some of their shows, and I, I've i gone backstage, you know, right. a couple of times and watched from there, uh, which was really uh, which was really interesting to, yeah. to see it. Because Zero, Zero Defects played music that was kind of, as you can tell, a little bit similar to that, right. but we never got that big. You know, and it's amazing to see them in San Bernardino playing uh, Ozfest or whatever. You know, these things that that well, I, I was there. Saw yeah, I was there when they played Ozfest. Yeah, I was backstage then. Oh, okay, <laughs> so we were both there. Right. Uh, but that was that was a trip to see that. And and yeah, he's he's into it. And and I think uh, he's he like me. He saw the the connection between the sort of punk ethos of of this kind of ethical punk thing right. as being similar to what uh, he was doing. And he's also. Um, 
you know, he's also into the, he, he was a heavy drinker and there's some videos out. Uh, there's a really embarrassing video of him being drunk and he's, he's, uh, he's off that stuff and he's now kind of uh, oh, straight edge. Uh, these days too, so that that ties in with it as well. Right. So and um, also uh, uh, Nina Hartley. Yeah, yeah. As she, somebody, uh, the, uh, the adult film star, is somebody. Well, yeah. The the connection with me and Nina Hartley was that I was dating this girl, and she, as kind of a, a gift, she gave me Nina Hartley's Guide to Fantastic Sex, and I'm like, oh, why are you giving me Nina Hartley's Guide to? And she says, no, well, look, there's look, a reason, <laughs> Brad. Yeah. No, she says, look on page, <laughs> look on look on the acknowledgments page, and I opened it up. And there's, you know, there's a few names I don't recognize, followed by about five different people's names I recognize from San Francisco Zen Center, like people right. at San Francisco Zen Center. Um, and it turns out that Nina Hartley's parents were monks at San Francisco Zen Center, both of them. And she had grown up in that in Tassajara, which is their monastery up in Northern California. Right. Um, so uh, I was writing for Suicide Girls at the time mm -hmm. and I pitched them the idea of me doing an interview with Nina Hartley and they made the connections. And then, mm -hmm. then I uh, started talking to her about, uh, she, she was married in a Zen Buddhist wedding ceremony okay. in, in, which, in which you take a vow to uphold the 10 Buddhist precepts. And the, num the third one in there, number three, is uh, do not misuse sexuality. So my lead in for the interview was how do you, you know, do you feel you're upholding the third Buddhist precept of not misusing sexuality? Right. Uh, and she does, you know, and I, and I put her in my book, Sex, Sin, and Zen, because I thought that was a really good example of this, this, um, this precept of not misusing sexuality is deliberately vague. You know, it, it, uh, right. the early Buddhists actually spelled out what misusing sexuality was, you know, the early Indian right. Buddhists 2,500 years ago. Right. But they, they quickly found out that as they moved into other cultures and things changed, that this, these, uh, you know, this thing that they'd written wasn't working. Right. So well, they just they just went to a very vague thing. So don't misuse it. Right. Because she she gave me a hand job right right over there when I was on the Ginger Lynch. Show. And was it misuse? It was not misuse. No, it was just very yeah. She's very well used. And she yeah. uh, she ate uh, Ginger Lynn out over here. That wasn't a misuse either. But uh, that's uh, yeah. She I I haven't seen any of that. <laughs> I, I don't ever have talked to her. It's just been kind of me and her talking. Right, right. I, I, I've seen a whole different side. We should get Nina Hartley on the show. She's, she's yeah, she'd be are you still, are you still writing? I have me with Nina Hartley. Well, that, fun. Absolutely, yeah. That would be fun. Uh, are you still writing for Suicide Girls? Um, I haven't written anything for them for a while. So Does that got you in trouble. Yeah. Well, you know, people people were upset by that. And, and I thought, it, my, my take on it was when they, they, they approached me to do this, and I thought, well, if I say no, then there's no Buddhist philosophy on Suicide Girls. And if I say yes, <laughs> there, there was Buddhist yeah. philosophy Well, you know, I, I, think, I think it would be, be interesting. And, and they gave hmm. me a free subscription to the site, so that was... Uh, that was ah, cool. there you go. <laughs> now we get the truth. So, you know. You but, know. but speaking of the Buddhist precepts, because I, I read some something today... Um, mm -hmm. And this is when you had your book, uh, Sex, Zen, what did Sex, it, Sin, and Zen. Sex, Sin, and Zen, which, uh, Sex, Zen. It was going to be called Sin, Sex, sex and, and Zen, but they, yeah. Sin, Sex, and Zen, which I read and I really yeah. enjoyed. Actually, that's another book I loaned to somebody. I loaned to my friend who's a swinger and I haven't gotten that back Damn. yet. <laughs> so apparently that's sitting there with Neil Hartley's How to Have Better Sex. But Probably, yeah. I don't know what they're, what they're doing. They're meditating and doing all sorts of tantric things. But, uh, uh, Maybe. You, there was a review, and they were, uh, or, or there was something they had. One of the Buddhist precepts is not to criticize. Oh yeah, yeah. And somebody took you to task because in some of your columns you criticized. I was criticizing, yeah. Yeah, you criticized. You know, specifically, there was somebody that uh, was a former student of yours. You called an ass wipe. <laughs> oh. uh, yeah, I did that once. Yeah. <laughs> But should you have put that in print? Oh, probably not. That was, but you know, the, the thing was, well, we, we all make we, mistakes and we're all trying to live well, up to it. Yeah. The thing with that particular person was I'd, I'd written it in on a blog post and I'd written it in such a vague way that you would have, there was no way anybody would have any idea who I was talking about. And then he went on the column, on the comment section and identified himself as the person. I'm like, what well, an you know ass what? wipe. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I didn't say anything that would have identified you and. Right. So you had to come out and and do right. that. But you've, I mean, you've also been critical. What, what, who's the guy that uh, the 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 older monk that's a big deal now? Oh, Thich Nhat Han. Thich Nhat Han. Yeah, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Thich Nhat yeah, Han. Yeah, you were very critical of him. Too. I was. I haven't been that critical of Thich Nhat Han. I, I, I he seems like a decent guy. The guy I've been most critical is a guy named Gempo Roshi, who is a guy who invented <laughs> this. Uh, 
this thing called Big Mind, which is supposed to get you a Buddhist enlightenment experience in like an hour. Uh, you know, this is some, oh, really? something people train for for decades, uh, and and he's saying he can div- give it to you in an hour, and it, it's just it's just a scam. But a lot of people are falling for it, and he was charging fifty thousand dollars for this, no joke. Wow, you know, and people were and paying it. it. Yeah, people were paying it, I, and I, I just I just couldn't believe that. No, it was I, amazing. <laughs> There's a lot. I mean, it, it, you know, people are always trying to find enlightenment. I remember I. I don't know. I, I was, uh, the, I, the, you know, the, the movie A Fish Called Wanda? Yeah, yeah. Like uh, Kevin Klein's character is based on a guy who apparently uh, in the 80s sold this thing, Buddha for Power. <laughs> oh, God. And really? John Lee said that's how he, he, based, <laughs> uh, he based that character on it. Wow. But um, anyways, I did not know that. Yeah, so that's, that, that, that's, because he kept, that's why he kept misquoting Buddhist uh, principles. And, uh, oh, and, uh, okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to have to watch that again. Now right, that I right. This. But Courtney, so now, uh, so you did not dance while you were pregnant. No. But I did see your triumphant return. I think I was there when you did Star Girls, when the first show back when you were pregnant. Yeah. Uh, after you were pregnant. I mean, you had the kid. And yeah, the kid's I had fine. the baby. I took a few months off. And, right. Um, you know, I, I I think I returned to the and, stage like six months. When and, my and, baby and, was and, six and, months and you look as ravishing as ever, if not better. Thank you <laughs> so much. So Thank in you. Star Girls, you, went, you, you, you play Stormtrooper? I am. Yeah, I'm the Stormtrooper. Right. Mm. And so you have you have the whole stormtrooper outfit. Yeah, I built it on my dining room table. You built it yourself. I do. Yeah, I fabric. Well, I, I learned costuming and set fabrication That's and prop cool. fabrication. Uh, I'm a very hands-on. I, yeah, it I'm not like a girly it. girl like burlesque dancer. Like, oh, I just show up and do my thing. No, I'm I'm since I'm a producer uh, of the show. I'm a very I'm the person who shows up at noon with the trailer full of. Props and lighting and all well, that. Well, that also gives you more expression, more power over the expression. Yeah, I, I, I like, um, I like to be at the end of it, be able to go, I, I made this. Okay, yeah. now what do you think? And, and the, yeah. these, these shows are not just empty burlesque. Uh, the dancers come out and then somebody sweeps up the clothes after them. No, there's a whole set. There's video screens. Yeah, there's. It's a whole thing. It's wow. you know specific projections for each character. We have props that people come out of. There's, I mean, the whole. It's it's a. It's a show. It's a very highly produced show for, good. yeah, for and, where and, it is. Didn't you get in trouble with George Lucas? That's what I did, yeah. Well, well, tell us I about did. that. Okay, so the story mm-hmm. is that five years ago, um, we did the first show at the Bordello, and the image of me as the stormtrooper went viral on the internet. and um, As it should. <laughs> it's a great I, image, no, yeah. No, I, I know, I know. I, I've, it was I've one looked of those, at that for hours, countless. It's one of those magical moments, you I know. Did, I did a lot of research on you. Oh, okay. you know, I did a lot of research. hands on. I looked at that, you, the Stormtrooper, <laughs> man. I have a new appreci- appreciation for Star Wars now. Yeah, I mean, it ended up literally within a matter of like 48 hours on thousands of websites. Mm-hmm. And I mean, Howard Stern was talking about it. It was on Boing Boing. It was on TMZ. It was everywhere. Right. And so obviously we had already been planning to do the show again because we were at Bordello, which was like a 200 person venue. Right. And I turned away like 600 people <laughs> that night. So I was like, okay, got to move it first thing. And secondly, let's do it again, obviously. So we moved it from the smallest venue in LA to the one of the largest. The Henry Fonda Theater. Which is the Henry Fonda Theater. Oh, that's, that's major. That's yeah, major. we sold it out two nights in a row in oh. two days. Well done. Yeah. Tickets went on sale, it was, they were gone. And, um, you know, a huge company, uh, Live Nation, hit me up and said, right. you know, we want to tour you guys and we're going to send you around. You're going to do all the house blues all over the country. Oh. So you're like... Yay, we win. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then the two days. Is with you. Yeah, yeah. You think the force is with you. And then the force comes and fucks you right up the ass <laughs> instead oh dear. with no lube. So basically, with what happened was, uh, you know, I, I wasn't familiar with like parody guidelines. And even though burlesque is considered parody, mm-hmm. there's guidelines that right, you have right. to follow. And so. You know, when you when I did the original show, I wasn't aware that it was gonna what was going to happen. You know, right. and so um, we just kind of did whatever we wanted. Bar- Barbie never came after you. No, Barbie never came after me at all. At all. Um, nobody else ever. Wrestling, came after me. The, the Star Trek. No, nobody did. Just just uh, Lucas. And what happened was, you know, because it was a viral mm-hmm. situation. Literally, if you typed in the two words Star Wars on Google. Mm-hmm we were the third thing that came up. <laughs> so, okay. and it's because of what, you know, right. when something like that happens, when, you know, a story goes viral and has right. millions of clicks, you know, and people are sharing the story on their blogs mm-hmm. and it's da, 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 da. 
So, um, so yeah, I got an email from them and, um, my PR lady actually used to work for them. And so she hit them up and said, you know, what's the problem? And they said, well, you know, she's completely infringing on our copyright. And she said, no, burlesque is parody. And they were like, yeah, no. <laughs> so I basically was given the okay to do the show at the Music Box Theater. But mm-hmm. then they said that they didn't want to see it in that format ever again. And so I went and I consulted with a parody lawyer. Right. And I had to make major changes to yeah. the title of the show, to characters. Which is, you know. which is Star Girls. Yeah, which you know, it was originally called Star Wars Burlesque. Oh, right. Uh, and now it's called Star Girls, okay. which is parody. And it's so. ever evolving. So uh, May 1st is the next one. The May Dragon 2nd. Ball. May yeah. 2nd. I'm sorry. May 2nd. Saturday, May 2nd. Saturday, May 2nd. I'm definitely, uh, you don't have to work on Saturday. You may not have to take it down there. It's, yeah, it's if fun. you guys want to go, just let me know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you want to come yeah, to, yeah. I'll put you on the no, list. No, I'm definitely, I'm definitely going. Yeah, where, cool. Where is it? It's at the Dragonfly. The dragonflies in punk Hollywood. Rock home. Yeah. yeah. It's I've, in Hollywood on Santa Monica and, and Wilcox. And Wilcox. Okay. Yeah. I've, I've been performing there area. since the since my first burlesque dancing like fifteen years ago. It's yeah, it's yeah. A, it's where Miss Kitty's is. It's like okay. there's I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm afraid I saw Miss Kennedy live. Point break live is there. Uh okay. There's a lot of stuff and a lot of a lot of uh, goth clubs, helter skelter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 what? When we go May second, and please put me on the list plus one. Absolutely. But, uh, you got when it. When we go on May second, what are we going to see? Uh, yeah. We have uh, twelve performers that night. I can't name character names, right? right. Uh, because that's. <laughs> oh, is that part of the? Yeah, what, that's part what, of the parody what, so guidelines. Who are the dancers? Uh, performers that you'll see. I, I mean, I have such a great variety in performers and we have pole dancers we have contortionists um wow ballet dancers girls who are i have a new girl who's a she's a ballet contortionist hip-hop ballet dancer really is she yeah (laughs) i believe she is yeah yeah she's amazing like the plus one i'll be there (laughs) she's she's the she's the new one of the new characters that we just added okay great and so uh and uh it's and and they they pack it in it's it's this great show as i Mm. said they have a whole set it's 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 a whole big yeah and there's an art show that happens as well um yeah so there's all these um artwork that's inspired by star wars and the star girls and and uh it's a breast cancer charity event that's so great. for five years, we've been working with the Busted Foundation and uh, helping raise funds for local women. Oh, that's really nice. Mm-hmm. Right. So, it's, so the force is with your breasts. Yeah. Hey, the <laughs> boobs got to help the boobs. I, 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 I right. appreciate that. Yeah. No, I, I've been I've been to Stargirl shows. Trust me, it's I, I like it better than Star Wars. <laughs> I, 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 I am never bored. I, I mean, I, I, you know, I, 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 I it, it's way better than the sequels. I'll tell you that. Have you ever had a Jar Jar Binks? No, we haven't. But, you know, we're doing a sequel uh, show. Uh, you know, the new movie's coming out, right. obviously, in December. And right. uh, we're, we're going to be... We're working on that uh, lightsaber, the cross lightsaber. Oh, wait. Just wait. Wait till you come <laughs> to the show next will, week. There's a crazy will, lightsaber uh, thing that happens oh, okay. that's going to be debuted with Darth Vader. So you're, you're going to love that. Right. And with you, are you Darth gonna be, Vader. Yeah. Our, our, oh, sorry. Our, I said the t- I said yeah. the character. Farth, you have to bleep Vader. that out. Farth Vader. Farth Vader. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, so uh, Dark you, Lord. I think is you, what we call her. Are you gonna be the stormtrooper? Are you gonna do an? Yeah. Yeah. No. I'm. I'm always the stormtrooper in the show. But we are doing a sequel. So we've got Star Girls, which is the original. Mm-hmm. Um, and we call it the Vampire Strikes. It's Star Girls, the Vampire Strikes Back. Vampire. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Good. And then. Uh, uh, our sequel is going to be coming out um, the beginning of next year. Right. It's called Star Girls. The farce is a shaken. <laughs> ah. And uh, yeah, it'll have all new characters in it. And Return of the Pasty, a- is that coming? Return, Return of the, the Pasty. Nicole's got a quick question. <laughs> yes. Has Disney approached you at all? Because Disney does not like when, uh, uh, after Disney bought Marvel, certain artists who are making Marvel art were no longer allowed to sell them. Yeah, Disney has not approached me thus far, but I also um, am very strict about falling under parity okay. guidelines. Um, I use a disclaimer that shows that we are not involved at all with them in any way, shape, or form. That uh, so you've learned from your mistakes. I, yeah, absolutely. Like I said, I was young and I just didn't know any better at that time, and so now I've learned what parody is and what is considered parody, and so, so that's so. If we want to, if we want to know more and, and see more of the, st- the shows, not just the Star Wars, but the Star Girls. Yeah, any of the Oops, um, Star Girls or whatever <laughs> shows you have. Uh, CourtneyCruz.com. CourtneyCruz.com. Yep. Or you can find us on Facebook, which is Devil's Playground. Devil's Burlesque. Playground. I do. I do recommend CourtneyCruz.com. I spent hours and hours <laughs> researching. Thank you, Courtney <laughs> Cruz, uh, for the show. And uh, Brad Warner, if you go to Heart uh, now. Does somebody have hardcorezen.com? Uh, yeah, unfortunately. And hardcorezen.net. 
Uh, yeah, we're, we're actually doing something about HardcoreZen.net, but yeah, HardcoreZen.info is what we are. Right, I, I got that. I just was wondering yeah. how, how you get to info. It, it just, just it's a long way down. There, yeah. It's HardcoreZen.tv, I'm sure, is still, is still going. Uh, yeah, it might be. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> but the, if you want to read uh, interesting, insightful things, and you have a... You have, a retreat this weekend. That's right, up in Mount Baldy. So that's where I'm going uh, this weekend to go stare at walls for uh, two, three days. And, and and just real quick, you you have two meditation classes uh, every week. Yeah, uh, one in uh, Silver Lake on Mondays and one in uh, Culver City on uh, Saturdays, and those are both listed at HardcoreZen.info with info. the, the um, addresses and all that. Okay, and uh, Nicole6.com. You read some scary stories. She does have some horror novellas on there. And uh, gothcomedian.com and uh, come to the Haha ha Cafe tomorrow in NoHo and go to Star Girls next week. I think we're all on the list. Yeah. Everybody, have a wonderfully <laughs> creepy week. Bye. Bye.